things that uh, you know final thoughts on the night uh, that 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 90 second d block that you get in television all the time it's like hey we've blown through all the time but we've got one more block to get through we got one more break to take 90 seconds just final thoughts on the night so last night i'm sitting in studio and it's like final thoughts on the night what's the big takeaway from the night you could have easily gone with uh you know purdue at, at, at winning comfortably at Maryland snapping the Terrapins 19 game home winning streak. Like Maryland had won 19 straight in that building. Purdue just goes there, uh, records uh, an eighth uh, victory inside the first two quadrants. That leads the country. But I really thought the story of the night was what Illinois did to the only team that has beaten Purdue so far this season, and that is Northwestern, because Illinois played Northwestern last night, just the second game since Terrence Shannon was suspended, and they beat them dudes by 30. Um, It was just six days ago that Terrence Shannon was suspended. He's been charged with rape in the state of Kansas, and at that point, it's it's reasonable to wonder when that happens, like uh, how the Illinois how Illinois will will respond to that? Like, are they, is the team going to come together in the face of adversity, or fall apart after losing such a massive piece? A guy who was projected to be a a first team All American by most. It's still too early to know for sure exactly which way this is going to go. I think, but the early returns have been great. First game without Terrence Shannon beat Fairly Dickinson by thirty three. Second game without Terrence Shannon beat Northwestern by thirty. So here's the question for you. Mm-hmm. Even if Terrence Shannon never returns to Illinois' basketball team, can the Illini compete? Can they finish? Let's just draw a hard line. Okay. Finish top three in the Big Ten even without Terrence Shannon. Now that I think is possible. Uh, the court report on Wednesday, item three in it is, I just, you know, I reassessed going into league play. All right, here are my preseason picks for every team to win all the Big Six conferences. Where do I stand now? Some answers changed, some didn't. Big Ten obviously did not change. Purdue is on a tier by itself, and the data all backs that up. But Illinois does stand as the firm number two team right now. Now, most of that obviously is with what it has been able to do to this point with still some actual preseason priors. Uh, Those don't fade out of Ken Palm until later on this month there. Uh, So it's not accounting for not having Terrence Shannon Jr. in the lineup, and nor should it. We went over that on a recent episode there, and we will see whether whether or not he comes back. We will will have to wait and see on that. Uh, They have not dropped off at all. Staying in the top three in the Big Ten, GP, that's absolutely on the table. Now, Wisconsin is entering into that conversation. It's 10 and 3. It got uh, you know, a, a casual win on Tuesday night over over Iowa, which is not in that discussion. Other teams in that discussion, who do we want to put in there, GP? Do we want to put Michigan State? Ohio State? Ohio State. I think those are the two. Else, really? Right? So it, it sounds I, I think on a surface level, it sounds like man, you lose Terrence Shannon, you're probably not going to finish top three in the Big Ten, except all you got to do to finish top three in the Big Ten is probably be better. Okay, I I agree with you, by the way. Purdue's on a level by itself. So let's just go ahead and slot Purdue in there, probably as your outright conference champion, but definitely in the top three. All right, so now we got two spots. Let's, Let's throw Wisconsin up there with Purdue just for the sake of this conversation. So now you got one more spot. You got to be better than Michigan State and Ohio State, and Nebraska, and Iowa, and Michigan. I think you can still do that without Terrence Shannon. I think that's probably true, and it probably speaks to when I spoke with Brad Underwood after they played in the Jimmy V, uh, and Underwood has even spoken on this again after the Shannon news. Um, He just stands by the fact that this team that he is coaching is more collectively mature and on top of its stuff, uh, guy by guy by guy down the roster from the starters to you know guys that are barely playing than any group he's ever had. Now, that is a bit of a coaching cliche. You'll sometimes get coaches saying that. Um, and then if you really go back and fact check him, you're like, well, you know, you said this three years ago and you said it six years ago. You want to really line those up here. So I get why coaches say it in the moment. Um, I certainly believe Underwood when we had that discussion, although it is interesting after the fact that even if he didn't know everything with Shannon, uh, he did give me that uh, that quote there, knowing that something potentially could be looming with Shannon. Again, though, they did him and, and the athletic director said they didn't really fully, fully understand the scope of everything that was happening there. I do think that Illinois is going to be one of the three best teams in the Big Ten. Um, whether, you know, the Shannon issue uh, becomes even louder. I honestly, I have no idea. But in the immediacy here, they haven't they haven't dropped off, and it's, it circles back to what you brought up on a show a couple couple shows ago. Where let's just let's just see what they are. And to this point, they are good. Oh, by the way, this is now teeing up for them to play 
at Purdue on Friday, one of the biggest games of the weekend there. But in my mind, just a quick aside on Purdue, uh, I think Purdue is more likely to win the game to win the league by three games than it is by one game. I think that's I think that's how much of a different tier Purdue is on. Now it's probably going to lose in league play, but I just don't see Illinois or any other team on the Boilermakers level. I don't either, but I don't think you got to be on Purdue's level to finish top three. And I think I'm not guaranteeing top three, but I can certainly envision it. Marcus Damask might be the new star. Nobody's going to replace what Terrence Shannon was doing, but Damask, he got thir- uh, 32 last night against mm-hmm. Northwestern, 11 of 15 from the field, six foot six, 23 year old, taking advantage of the extra COVID year. He played four years at Southern Illinois was a double digit score every single year um and you know is now a double digit score at Illinois alongside Quincy Garrier and and Coleman Hawkins like that's a pretty good top 3 like uh, you you're missing Terrence Shannon but like if i tell you the top 3 is Damask, Quincy and Coleman Hawkins like that's a pretty good top 3 it's pretty good i would say you're looking for a little potentially more consistency like Hawkins in general, and he's had some injury issues, but it's, it's solid. And now we'll see if I can just kind of step back even further. Uh, Big 10 in general, uh, league is ranked fourth overall uh, per the metrics in, in overall league strength. And is it going to, are we going to have a situation where it can dodge having a bit of a muddy middle, which it had last season, but let me bring this up. So last season, obviously Purdue was on its own tier, won the league by three games, which I think it's going to do again. But then you had the likes of Northwestern, a seventh seed, MSU, a seventh seed. IU was a four and IU did get one win in the tournament, but didn't make the sweet 16. Of course, Maryland, Illinois, Iowa, Penn state. These were all eight, nine, tens. Um, will we see, you know, Purdue? let's say Purdue's a one seed. Will we see, Wisconsin, Illinois, Michigan State, will they be able to break through and get on that two or three line? Uh, will you have, how about this? We have, will the top three teams in the Big Ten do what the top three teams in the Big Ten couldn't do last season and have three teams ranked or seeded fourth or better? I actually think that remains to be seen, but um, but there is some positive development in Wisconsin right there alongside the likes of Illinois. Wisconsin looks like it's got... Uh, it's got some some goods to it, even despite a couple of you know eye-opening losses. we got plenty of time to talk about the Big Ten all season long. We'll revisit it perhaps as soon as Friday, but for now, let's move on.